athlete will be the subject of the biography round on Sports Challenge. Last week's champion, the Kansas City Chiefs, Len Dawson, Willie Lanier, and Otis Taylor. They'll meet the challenge of the 1971 champion Miami Dolphins, Larry Zonka, Jim Pitt, and Paul Warfield. And now here is your host, the award-winning voice of the Rams and the Angels, Dick Enberg. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome fans from coast to coast and around the world to Sports Challenge. And we have quite a game for you today. A rematch of the two teams involved in the longest football game ever played in the pro ranks. The Kansas City Chiefs, Len Dawson, Willie Lanier, and Otis Taylor, our current champions, will meet the challenge of the Miami Dolphins, Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, and Paul Warfield. And I guess uh, the name Kick conjures up memories of that kick that uh, kicked the Chiefs right out of the playoffs when uh, your man, your premium, came through in uh, double overtime. Where were you at that time, Larry Zonka? I was trying to hide from Willie Lanier. Over there. <laughs> The honey bear had been after me all day, and I uh, trying to keep away from him as much as possible. Honey bear is your nickname, Willie Lanier? We ought to play Miami next year. He shouldn't have said that on national television. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the Dolphins and the Chiefs, we're ready to go. Each team is competing for $1,000 worth of AMF Void sports equipment. Runners-up play for $500 worth. And Johnny, for what youth groups are today's teams playing? Well, this week, the Kansas City Chiefs are playing for the Jones Memorial Community Center of Chicago Heights, Illinois. And the Miami Dolphins represent the Bartow JCs of Bartow, Florida. Voight, from basketball to bowling, scuba gear to golf. Voight stands for durability and consumer value. And it's been that way for 50 years. Okay, Dick. Then we'll begin our first category with unforgettable moments and a look at a World Series mistake making a man a hero right after this sports challenge timeout. Representing the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins first category men unforgettable moments and for the Pirates Bob Robertson It's both happily unforgettable and sheepishly embarrassing third game 71 series bottom of the seventh two on Baltimore's manager Earl Weaver talks to pitcher Mike Cuellar as we listen well, We're back in the ball game. We're only one run down. No, we made a mistake We let the guy get on and the ball hit back to you. We can't afford to have two men on base with that big guy coming up Come on settle down Keep us right in the ball game, Mike. We'll win the son of a gun. Come on. Earl Weaver back to the dugout. The hitter, Bob Robertson of the Pirates. Frank Osiak gives Robertson the bunt sign. Runners at second and first and no one out here in the seventh inning. 2-1 Pittsburgh. Bob Robertson does not acknowledge the bunt sign, so Osiak goes through it again. Robertson still doesn't look. He didn't sacrifice all year long. Roberto Clemente calls time, but the umpires do not acknowledge it. Cuellar from the belt. The pitch. Screwball outside. Hit to right center field and deep. Back, back, back. Home run! Robertson gives the Pirates a 5-1 to one lead after missing the bunt sign. Too soon on his sign because I was very anxious to get a base hit in that situation. And then Willis Stroger was the first one to shake my hand. He said, better way to bunt the ball, Hoss. Way to bunt the ball, Hoss, indeed. And then the winning Pirate pitcher in this game also won the final game of the 1971 World Series. Your toss-up question, 20 points. Who is he? Lenny Dawson. Blass. Steve, Steve Blass, Blass is correct for 20 points. First round free throws belong to the Chiefs. This unforgettable moment thrilled the nation's football fans in the 1971 AFC playoffs. Colts trail 7-0 third period here in Miami. And back to throw Unitas. He pumps once. He's looking long for Eddie Hinton. He throws long and Hinton is behind the defense. Johnson tips it away and Dick Anderson intercepts for Miami at the 40. Anderson at the 45 gets a great block. 50. Anderson cuts cross field 45-40. Picks up a wave of Miami blockers in front of him. Anderson has a chance to go all the way. He's at the 30. Another great block. 25-20-15. Anderson to the 10. Another block on Unitas. And Anderson is in a 62-yard touchdown for Miami. And they lead 13 to nothing. The man who threw that forward pass was Johnny Unitas, who has appeared in two Super Bowl games. Let's see, uh, all six of you here have appeared in at least one. The record for appearances is four for ten points. What Herb former Adderley. Packer star holds that mark? Herb Adderley. Herb Adderley. Herb Adderley is correct. Twice with the Cowboys, twice with the Packers. 30 to nothing, second free throw, Kansas City. An unforgettable moment for Joe DiMaggio. It's September 1949. A sellout crowd here at Yankee Stadium here to honor the Yankees famed outfielder Joe DiMaggio. And the fans here in the Bronx shout their appreciation. 
announcer Mel Allen, New York Mayor O'Dwyer participate in the ceremonies, along with the DiMaggio family. Joe's son, his mother, and baseball brothers Vince, now retired, and Dominic, who is active in this final series of the season as Boston center fielder. A kiss from mom, but for all here, Dimaj is their boy, too. When New York honors its heroes, indeed, an unforgettable moment. <laughs> for 10 points, and Willie Lanier, if you get this one, you are double tough. <laughs> all three DiMaggio brothers have the same middle name. What is it? Dominic, Vince, and Joe all have the same middle name. Will Time I... is up. <laughs> For the Miami Dolphins, you have five seconds to think it over. They all three have the same middle name. Anyone venture a guess? How about you, Paul? No idea? Paul was the correct answer. And interestingly, Joe told me that he was the one in his confirmation who picked his middle name, Paul, and the other brothers thought that wasn't a bad idea, so they took the same name. Paul, the middle name of all three DiMaggio's. After one round, Chiefs 30, Dolphins nothing, new category, the important toss-up question. Famous finishes, and this is the kind of finish for which this great player is famous. It's the closing seconds, a 1-10 tie, 1972 NBA All-Star game. Here are Keith Jackson and Bill Russell. It comes to Oscar, and it's almost stolen by Frazier. Knocked out of bounds, they use two seconds. Nine seconds to play. They still gotta go to the front court. Now, now you're gonna have Jerry West probably get it, and he's gonna try to go all the way, most likely. Eight seconds. Six, five, four, three, two. two. It's over! <laughs> you can see that coming. You know he's gonna get the two. You know, it's incredible as West's performance is Bill Russell's commentary. He says West is going to get it and try to go all the way. And I don't know if you noticed, but when the ball just left West's hand, Bill in the background said, that's two points. And he was so right as West wins that NBA All-Star game. Your toss-up question in 20 points. From the following alphabetical list, name the All-Star of the All-Star games. The only NBA player ever to be named All-Star MVP four times in that game. Is it? Len Dawson. Oscar Robertson. Oscar Robertson is incorrect. So, Dolphins, it's your question. I'll repeat it again. Which one has won the MVP in the All-Star Game four times? Is it Elgin Baylor, Bob Cousy, Bob Pettit, or Bill Sharman? And we can give you a clue since Kansas City jumped the gun. He scored over 20,000 points and played for the Hawks through 65. No, a flip it. Bob Pettit. Bob Pettit is correct for 20 points. I could not hear any specific names, but please, no coaching from the audience. The category belongs to the Miami Dolphins. This famous finish holds a unique record-breaking spot in the football history books, and it belongs in all of your memories. Miami at Kansas City, first round AFC playoffs, 1971. Already, this is the longest pro football game ever played. Yep, Permian, 37-yard field goal try. The kick is up. It's high enough. It's long enough. It's good! Miami beats Kansas City, and Don Shula's Dolphins will host the American Football Conference Championship. Well, I guess since Miami won that game, it's appropriate that you get the free throws in this category. In the only other NFL overtime game, Dolphins, the Colts were trailing the Giants with just seconds remaining. For 10 points, name the Colt whose field goal sent that game into overtime. Remember that famed game at Yankee Stadium? Five seconds. Retichar? Bert Retichar did kick field goals for Baltimore, but he was not the man of this moment. For the Kansas City Chiefs, we doubled the point total. 20 points. If you can name the Colt who kicked the field goal that tied that famed overtime game. Oh, man, I know who he is, too. <laughs> Time's up. Steve Myra. Myra. Steve Myra. Myra. All right, the second free throw belongs to Miami. If you get it correctly, you will tie the game. This famous finish launched a very short championship reign for a devastating puncher. September 1962, Chicago. Challenger Sonny Liston meets heavyweight boxing champion Floyd Patterson. Patterson neglects to stay low, and Liston gets to him against the ropes with lefts and rights. Ties him up, won't let him get away. Liston with a left, a short right to the body, a left hook, and Patterson is down.
Billy Weston knocks out Floyd Patterson in one round to become the 21st heavyweight champion of the world. The following year, there was a famous Liston-Patterson rematch the following year, which also resulted in a KO victory for Liston. For 10 points, Miami, in what round did the rematch end? Five seconds. Your answer? First round. First round is correct, Paul Warfield. And after two rounds, we have a tie game. The Kansas City Chiefs 30, the Miami Dolphins 30. And we'll be back with round three, record breakers, and an amazing hockey star in action right after this sports challenge in China. Take a moment to publicly thank the United Helms Athletic Foundation for this very meaningful award presented to the Sports Challenge Show for efforts in aiding youth organizations throughout the nation. On behalf of our producer, Jerry Gross, and our entire staff, we thank you for this honor. All right, men, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins tied at 30 as we go to our third round in the new category, appropriately, is award winners. Award winners, the men who earned them. Here's Chuck Benedict. Tony Esposito of the Chicago Blackhawks in 1969. As a rookie, winner of both the Calder and Vezina trophies. Let's watch the great Esposito talent. As a rookie, Esposito set the modern NHL record, 15 shutouts in one season. For your toss-up question and 20 points, which of the following goalies has the all-time career record for NHL shutouts? Alphabetically, Glenn Hall, Jacques Plante, or Terry Sawchuk? Lenny Dawson. Jacques Plante. Jacques Plante is incorrect. <laughs> Miami Dolphins, 20 points, is it? Glenn Hall, Jacques Plante, or Terry Sawchuk? I can give you a clue. He spent his 20 NHL years with five different teams and recently met a tragic death. Sawchuk. Terry Sawchuk is correct for 20 points. <laughs> Free throws. As stars for many years, both winners of MVP honors, Otis Taylor and Len Dawson, are frequent award winners. Let's watch them against Minnesota in Super Bowl IV. Dawson, quick count. Dawson, throws sideline pattern. Taylor. Taylor. All right, the category belongs to the Miami Dolphins. Taylor scoring against the Vikings in the clip you just saw. Ten points in 1966 against those Minnesota Vikings. What Detroit Lion set a new record of six field goals in one game? Paul Warfield. Garo Yepremio. Garo of course, your teammate. The Lions couldn't use him. They cut him, and Miami picked him up. Six field goals in one game for Yepremio, a record that has since been broken. It is 60 to 60-30 in favor of Miami. Second free throw Dolphins World Series. Award winner Billy Martin, who actually was a star in several Octobers. It's the Yankees and Dodgers, 1952, seventh game. Jackie Robinson up, bases loaded for Brooklyn, seventh inning, 4-2 Yankees. Brillo at third, Cox at second, Reese at first, they lead away. Bob Cassava delivers. Robinson swings and sends a high pop fly on the infield. Collins doesn't come in from first. Here's Billy Martin. Martin with a great catch. He saves the game. Billy Martin has the six-game series record for hits, along with that great catch. He had 12 base hits in six games a record. Two players hold the World Series record for seven games, 13 hits. Name them for five points each. 13 hits in a series, five points each. You have five seconds. Time is up, I'm sorry. So the Kansas City Chiefs, we can give you 10 points and 10 points if you can name the two men who have 13 hits in a series. Roberto Clemente is one. Roberto won. Clemente is not one of them. <laughs> we'll give you one more guess. Richardson. Bobby Richardson is good for 10 points. The other is Lou Brock. Lou Brock and Bobby Richardson. So the score after three rounds, the Miami Dolphins 60, the Kansas City Chiefs 40. Our category superstars now. And in the AFC, there's a superstar who has been bothering NFL defensive backs for years. Let's watch a key moment from the first round of the 1971 AFC playoffs. Chiefs 10, Miami nothing, second quarter here in Kansas City. The playoff hopes of both teams on the line. Greasy back to throw for Miami, looking for a favorite target, Warfield. He's got it on the near sidelines. Great catch by Warfield. He dances back, gives some ground. Warfield at the 30. He's to the Kansas City 25. Stutter steps his way down to the Kansas City 21-yard line. Question. You're both alive, the toss-up. 
superstar Paul Warfield, a super receiver more than 35 years ago, still holds the record for leading the NFL in receiving for the most total years. Your toss-up question for 20 points. What great pass receiver of the past led the NFL in eight different seasons? A record. Lenny Dawson first. Uh, Hudson. Don Hudson is correct for 20 points, and we have a tie game. 60 to 60 in our final round, and the Chiefs with a chance era. to take the lead. First free throw involves a superstar in baseball and a demonstration on just how it's done. Students, our topic today, baseball superstars. The subject, Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates, all in the 1971 World Series. Ingredients to be a superstar. You must be able to hit the ball and hit it with power. Number three, you must run well. Throw, and oh, how Roberto Clemente can throw. And you must catch the ball. Roberto Clemente, superstar. Roberto Clemente was the leading hitter in the 1971 World Series with a 414 average. For 10 points, Chiefs, what former Yankee hit 625 in the 1928 series? That is a World Series record, 625. What All year, time high. What year was that? 1928. You remember that. You're well, don't you? <laughs> Five seconds for a guess. I would say uh, Gary. Gehrig is close, but not close enough. So 20 points for Miami. If you can tell me the 1928 Yankee performer who hit 625, an all-time record. Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth is correct. You knew it all the time, didn't you, Jim? <laughs> and they score now 80 to 60 in favor of Miami. Second free throw belongs to the Chiefs. When you're a quarterback, gaining the reputation as a superstar, it doesn't hurt to have three great receivers in the lineup with you. Watch closely now. Well, fans, Norm Van Brocklin is at it again. Another big day for the Dutchman. He fires first to Pete Retzlaff for a big eagle gain as Philadelphia on its way to this 1960 NFL title. Next, Bobby Walston with a great catch. And a Philadelphia touchdown. And now to his favorite, littlest, and perhaps most effective receiver. And another eagle touchdown. His last season in the NFL, Norm Van Brocklin with a super year. And your question, Kansas City, for 10 points in that clip, who was number 25? Who Tommy McDonald. Tommy McDonald. Tommy McDonald, indeed. So after four rounds, a nip and tuck game. The Dolphins 80 and the Chiefs 70, and it's almost as if we're going to go into overtime again. We're very pleased to let you know that win or lose, all our panelists will receive the brand new Mattel Sports Challenge Instant Replay Quiz Game to enjoy at home. And we'll be back with our all-important biography round right after this Sports Challenge timeout. Closes their AFC playoff match. The Miami Dolphins 80, the Kansas City Chiefs 70, and now time for our biography round. With the clues, here's John. Our award-winning star completed his rookie season with honors. He gained fame as a collegian on the West Coast, leading his team to a Rose Bowl victory. He won the Heisman Trophy in 1970. Stop, it is Willie Lanier. Your answer, please. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett is correct. The Chiefs are still champions. The Kansas City Chiefs, Willie Lanier, the specialist who gets the mystery guest again. Here he is, Jim Plunkett. Come on up here, Jim. Jim Plunkett, the great star with Stanford, and the 1970 Rose Bowl hero, and you made it look surprisingly easy as a pro with your great year teaming up with your former Stanford mate, Randy Vitaha. I guess just to have a, an old friend, collegiate friend with you in the pro ranks helped a bit. It did help quite a bit. Who hit you hardest uh, in your first pro season? I don't know. I don't really watch who's hit me because I've got my eyes closed, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> You'll learn that from all good quarterbacks. Final question. Uh... Jim Plunkett has a tremendously strong arm. We've always wondered how far, if you stood on the goal line and really wound up and threw the ball as long as you are physically possible, maybe you've done this, how far do you think you could throw it? I haven't done it for quite some time since I was in high school, and then it was 80 yards. Just 80 uh, in high school. Yeah. 
Well, Jim, that's that's long enough. And thank you for being our guest on Sports Channel. Thank you. Jim Plunkett of the New England Patriots, our guest. Willie Lanier wants to get a hold of you right now. And we'll be back in a moment to tell you about all of our winners and next week's challenges right now, this Sports Challenge timeout. The show has ended. Willie has come up with another mystery guest. And for the last two weeks, it has been his choice that has won the Kansas City Chiefs the championship and with the official score here's John Nick it's true the winners of this sports challenge are the Kansas City Chiefs and the Jones Memorial Community Center of Chicago Heights Illinois for whom they were playing will receive a thousand dollars worth of AMF Void athletic equipment of course there are no losers on sports challenge the Bartow JC's Bartow Florida for whom the Miami Dolphins were playing will receive five hundred dollars worth of athletic equipment from sports challenge by the way if you have a junior athletic organization you'd like to see represented drop us a line to sports challenge 5800 Sunset Boulevard Hollywood California well since the Kansas City Chiefs won this week they'll return of course next week and dick who will be here to challenge him well johnny since the miami dolphins eliminated kansas city from the playoffs and the chiefs did not get a chance to play dallas in the super bowl we thought we'd have our own super bowl on sports challenge next week the challengers will be the cowboys bob hayes lance allworth and roger Staubach. they'll join our current champions the kansas city chiefs yours truly dick Enberg. we'll see you again next week on the sports challenge